Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to your newest favorite YouTube channel, if you've never been here. Otherwise, welcome back. Every Saturday morning, we do these videos between 10 a.m. and 10, 15 a.m., where the videos on average last 15 minutes or so, and we dive in to a topic de la semaine, because I only do this once a week. Where do I get my topics from? I actually get them from your questions. I read through your comment sections, even though I don't have time to answer every single one of them, otherwise I would have carpal tunnel. And I try to gather what people are really asking about, what they're questioning, what they wanna learn more about. So before we commence, make sure that you've subscribed, why not just like the video because you're probably going to like it. Who are we kidding? And then comment below, okay? Because I really do want to see how best I can help you help yourself. I actually do go deep into the comment section to understand what it is people are wondering about and if they're wondering about anything or nothing at all. So maybe one day there will be no comments and we will be done. <laughs> so until that day comes, I will keep on going. So today, my little nerds, get your pens, get your glasses, get your notebooks ready because we are going to dive deep into the world of azelaic acid. Why azelaic acid? Because what's not to love about azelaic acid? Azelaic acid is literally, and I think I've compared this one in the past, which is the most friendly sign of the zodiac? Ooh. Mmm most helpful and emotionally giving signs of the zodiac <laughs> we're back to the zodiac with miss cleo and they're extremely helpful they want to over promise sometimes they under deliver and they are as like acid is a sagittarius of the bunch now all fellow sagittariuses you guys are stubborn af my daughter is driving me nuts but she has a good heart and I see it and I acknowledge it, not because she's my daughter, but I do see it. And I see it also with my mom because they share the same birthday. So it's not a dig at you. You guys are annoying and stubborn, but I love you because you give, 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 give. And so does azelaic acid. So my rant on the horoscope is done. Your hour with Miss Cleo is over. So let's dive in. Before we actually get into the nitty gritty science, I want to quickly talk history because like the best things in life, this one was completely discovered serendipitously. What does that even mean? Serendipity is still my favorite movie from the 90s or early 2000s, but it happened haphazardly. And basically, the human inquisitive mind led some scientists to really dig deeper when they noticed that people with tinea versicolor, that is a infection that happens on the skin, which is caused by a yeast, also known as malassezia fervor, had these white, hypopigmented, hypochromic patches on their skin. And they scratched their heads and they thought to themselves, why is this yeast whitening this person's skin? And so they dug a little deeper. And what they realized is that this particular yeast makes azelaic acid. And by making azelaic acid, azelaic acid actually works against tyrosinase. What's tyrosinase? Tyrosinase is the enzyme that dictates how fast melanin is made. So when you are infected with tinea versicolor, when you have that yeast, malassezia on your skin, and it's infecting your cells, it's secreting azelaic acid, which is inhibiting your melanin from being produced. So when it's summertime and it's hot and it's sunny and you go to the beach, and all of a sudden you notice white splotches on your chest or your back, that yeast is producing the azelaic acid that's blocking your skin from forming pigment, crazy, in the sun, and it's even more visible. And so the scientists were like, whoa, if this yeast can make this ingredient that now inhibits how pigment is produced, what else can it help? And that is how we discovered the medical usage of azelaic acid. I find that story amazing because it was completely haphazard. So before we get into the actual benefits that we have now discovered down the road after having used azelaic acid in our repertoire for many years, I also wanna just quickly talk about the science. It is a dicarboxylic acid, like I said, produced by malassezia fervor, and it is also found in certain natural substances and grains like rye, barley wheat, and certain animal products. FYI, azelaic acid is a distant relative to alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. When I say distant, I'm talking like third degree or fourth degree cousin. I don't even know if that's a thing. But the word acid is really all they really have in common because azelaic acid is not an exfoliating acid, unlike AHAs and BHAs. Also, if you're super sensitive to an AHA or a BHA, 
don't be afraid of the azaleics, okay? Um, because they tend to have the best safety profile on the market. If you are somebody who has very sensitive skin, I would probably approach azelaic acid with more open arms than I would glycolic. Um, I would test it out before I slather it all over my face. Like anything good in life, you always test it before you marry it. I hope so, you know, unless you went to Vegas on a one drunken night, who knows? But I would tell you, test it out, date it, and then get married. So maybe test it in front of your ear if you are super sensitive. But I will say that if you are very, very sensitive, this is one of the ingredients that I have no problem prescribing to you. So if that's of any reassurance, then I hope, I don't know what isn't. Okay, I'm forgetting how to speak because it's been a long day. What exactly now are the benefits of azelaic acid? Well, when I think of azelaic acid, it is a multi-targeted drug. It helps with many different things. But before we jump in to the different categories, know that azelaic acid targets cells that are hyperactive. So any condition in which you have a hyperactivity of sorts, inflammation, so like acne and rosacea, it can help minimize that inflammation. Any condition that has a hyperproliferation of pigment, like that B-I-T-C-H melasma, that one, I hate melasma with a vengeance, I, I with a passion, I could just, she drives me nuts, melasma. Um, azelaic acid is gonna target those pigment cells that are hyper-producing pigmentation to help minimize it. Um, even certain types of cancers, like lentigo maligna, azelaic acid is more likely to help minimize the pigmentation in a lentigo maligna. It doesn't mean it's curing it, but it just means that it's a sign that it may actually be dangerous if it fades because of just the azelaic acid. Um, because they are hyper-proliferative cells that pick up the azelaic acid and make it work. Um, so let us start with number one, acne and its antibacterial effects. So again, a little brief, tiny history. The antibacterial effects of azelaic acid were only discovered by the off chance now, once they were trying to treat melasma patients with it. They noticed that people with melasma who were using azelaic acid tended to have less breakouts. And that's when they noticed that there was a connection with azelaic acid and acne. And what they found was that azelaic acid helps to kill P. acnes, which is rare because not that many ingredients kill that evil inducing acne bacteria. And so they thought, this is awesome. We should just use this for acne. And that's literally how azelaic acid came about for acne. It was by chance. And what they found was that the 20% solution of azelaic acid worked great. And they even showed that it was even almost up to par with tretinoin when used longer term. Now, what is the sweet spot for azelaic acid? It's really between 10 and 20%. However, one study did show that at 5%, when combined with 2% clindamycin, which is an antibiotic, you can get up to, I think it was like 60% improvement of your acne. So it's pretty potent not to be underestimated and not to take its kindness as weakness. And number two, it regulates the production of skin cells, especially in acne prone skin. So people who have a lot of blackheads and clogged pores, azelaic is your BFF. Why? Because it blocks the way that your keratinocytes hyper differentiate and hyper proliferate. And therefore it minimizes how much your pores get obstructed and blocked into forming blackheads. And so it is a great adjunct if you have acne and blackheads, I would definitely make sure to add azelaic acid. Number three, it is also great because of its anti-inflammatory effects. It has been proven to have anti-inflammatory effects at 15%, and that's usually what we prescribe. And last and not least, and the best one of all, it's skin lightening effects number four. Now, the interesting part about its skin lightening effects is that it has no activity actually on normal skin cells. So it's not going to bleach you out. But the hyperactive cells pick it up. And by picking it up, diarosinase gets blocked, and gets minimized and your skin tone eventually becomes more even. So like I said, melasma, lentigo maligna, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from having a lot of inflammation, which I mentioned earlier, azelaic acid helps suppress. All of those conditions can get better with a little bit of the AA in the game. Now, some studies actually compare azelaic acid to my, my, my creme de la creme hydroquinone. 
at two and four percent. But the reason I think I still prefer hydroquinone to azelaic acid is because hydroquinone can still at least lighten age spots, like solar lentigos, like things that happen because of a lot of sun exposure in your youth when you are young and dumb and naive. But azelaic acid will unfortunately not minimize the color of your quote unquote wisdom spots or age spots or sunspots. It will only help in areas where you've had active inflammation or a hyperproliferation of pigmentation like melasma. And with that said, let's talk about formulation because this is what I find the most interesting and most intriguing. So I have looked to formulate something with azelaic acid because I think it is an ingredient that can be very beneficial. But the problem with azelaic acid is that it is a powder. And as a powder, it works as a suspension. Mm -hmm. And once that powder is mixed into the goop and the goop dries out on your skin, it tends to mattify your skin and it can even pill. Because again, it's a powder that now the liquid has evaporated around and the powder sits on top of your skin. That doesn't mean it's not working. It just means that it's cosmetically not elegant. And so I think azelaic acid products are hard to stick to in a routine because they can be not so aspirational. You know, it doesn't really make your skin glow as much as you want it to glow. It doesn't give you that instant gratification. And not to mention the pilling can be quite annoying. Plus it has a little bit of a scent. So when it comes to formulating azelaic acid, if you notice that your product is pilling, and you're getting a little bit of all of this like fuzz after you've applied it and you've allowed it to dry out, no, it's because azelaic acid is actually a powder and that it has, it has evaporated and now the powder is sitting on your face. So that's just something to keep in mind. The ideal concentration is 10 to 20%. Prescription usually starts at 15% and goes up to 20%. But again, very interesting. Azelaic acid, prescription at 15% gel has been shown to be more absorbent than the 20% cream. And I think that is fascinating because the vehicle of the product is sometimes even more important than the concentration of the product. And that's why I am not pro disclosing all of the percentages of ingredients because I think it can confuse a consumer and it can work to your detriment. Now, the only real ingredient where I think the percentage is absolutely necessary in, for, in order for you to understand what you're getting, it's retinols because you want to gauge how your skin responds to various levels of retinols. And one day we will talk about that more in depth. But for today, azelaic acid is between 10 and 20%. The 15% gel has been shown to have an 8% higher absorption rate than the 20% cream. So something for you guys to keep in mind. So with that being said, I first want to start with the prescription. As you can see, I use this guy quite a bit. It is a gel, but it looks like a light lotion, okay? And what I find fascinating, actually, about the azelaic acid 15% gel is that I've actually never had any issues with pilling from this one. The way this particular prescription is formulated, it works wonders on the skin. On its own, it can be very beautiful, and I absolutely love this 15% um, azelaic acid gel. And I would strongly recommend that you get yourself a nice prescription of this because it's beautiful. If you do not have access to your doctor or you just don't want to go see your doctor, here are some over-the-counter options that I'm going to describe very briefly for all of you. This one is by Paula's Choice. It is a 10% azelaic acid booster. This one retails for $38, as you guys can kind of see over here. It does have a very nice texture, but I will tell you, it stinks. It smells like chalk, to be very frank. So if you don't mind that scent, then knock yourself out. This is a great product. They even offered me, and I don't get any extra commission from this. This is not a way for me to make extra money at all. They are giving you guys this discount because they like that you guys like the products when I recommend it. But it's Dr. Idris, D-R-I-D-R-I-S-S 15 for an additional 15% off. Um, I will link it below, okay? So you guys can get yourselves an additional 15% off and knock yourselves out this Saturday with Paula's Choice. And you can stink in the process. I do not like the smell of this, uh, but I use it on occasion. Now, The Ordinary has a 10% azelaic acid suspension. And this is their product. This one retails for $7.90. I will show you. It is thicker. It also has a stink to it. 
that the prescription does not have. So this one is definitely thicker. This one is the 10% azelaic acid. As it dries out, I actually do want to show you guys. It's interesting. But do you see how one hand is matte and the other is not? Can you see that? This is the hand on which I applied it. And you could see everything looks matte, whereas here it doesn't look as matte. Um, and I have no moisturizer on the other hand. So it definitely mattifies. And I will tell you, this one does pill. So after a minute or two, you get pilling. It's to be expected. Like I said, once it evaporates, that product is just gonna sit on the surface of your skin. And last, Dr. Sam Bunting. Now she has formulated this one with a bunch of other actives. This is her Flawless Brightly Serum. And I will tell you right now, this contains water, azelaic acid, niacinamide. Um, there is a vitamin C in this. Uh, there's bakushal. And that's pretty much what this contains. Um, it is a nice one. I do not know the percentage at which niacinamide is in this particular product. So I cannot speak for it. It doesn't stink as much as the rest but it is definitely mattifying once it dries out. So if you're expecting a glow, you will not get it with this. However, if you have melasma or hyperpigmentation from inflammation, this is a great one to add on as well because you get a little bit of everything else in the process. So with that, I think azelaic acid is great for acne prone skin. I think it is great for people with rosacea and underlying inflammation. I also think it is great for darker skin tones that get breakouts to minimize how much hyperpigmentation is left behind. And it is a no brainer to add if you have melasma. The only problem with melasma is I would recommend just getting a prescription added onto your routine because that is the most elegant way to add it to your routine without becoming a complete pill ball. You see that? You guys see how it pills? It's just the nature of the game. Well, I am completely flaking everywhere. If I showed you guys, oh my God, look, look, look. Uh, <laughs> it is completely a pill monster of an ingredient, but definitely worthwhile having, especially if you have melasma. This is out of control. I am completely pilling. So to be expected when using an azelaic acid product, not to freak out about. If you can't tolerate it, just get the prescription and stick to just using it at night because you're going to pass out and no one's really going to watch you. At least you hope no one's watching you. Okay, that's a little freaky on this Saturday morning. But happy Saturday. I'm Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next week.